The second gas law, sometimes known as a pressure law, you don't need to know them by their names, but is, and it links pressure and temperature. So the pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. But here's a really key idea. If and only if that temperature's in Kelvin, and once again, and this is when we're talking about a fixed mass of gas. And this time it's volume that we're keeping constant. So our two variables that we're investigating are pressure and temperature. So this idea of Kelvin is that, remember, when you do this experiment, if you plot temperature uh, versus pressure, you don't get a straight line through the origin unless your temperature is in Kelvin. Okay? If your temperature is in degrees Celsius, it looks still a straight line, but it doesn't go through the origin and therefore doesn't indicate direct proportion. So it's got to be in Kelvin. Once we introduce the idea of Kelvin, then we've got to talk a wee bit more about that. So we've got to define what we call absolute zero. And there's basically two ways of defining absolute zero. Absolute zero is the temperature for which pressure of a gas is zero. So that means in that first graph there uh, that it's going to go through the origin. That pressure and temperature are both zero at the same thing. And it's somewhat surprising that this is a universal value that every gas actually has the same zero. And that's to do with what's going on inside the gas and the other way we can define absolute zero it is the temperature at which the particles of a gas have no kinetic energy I have stopped moving. So if we think about our definition of temperature, it's a measure of the average kinetic energy. So when you cool things down, on average they start to move more slowly. But that's going to reach a limit eventually because if you start slowing them down and slowing them down, eventually they're going to stop. And that's what we mean by absolute zero. That's when the particles of a gas stop moving. And if they've stopped moving, they're not going to be colliding with our surroundings and therefore they're not going to be applying any pressure. Now the value of absolute zero right, is uh, zero Kelvin is minus 273 degrees Celsius. So when you're trying to memorise us how to convert between Celsius and Kelvin, I think it's really important to always start with that point. Absolute zero is really cold, but it's defined as zero Kelvin. So when you are transferring, it's going to be a really cold. Most people can remember that it involves a conversion of 273, but people sometimes struggle to remember when am I adding, when am I subtracting. If you're struggling with that, then I would suggest you just start by writing down that fact. Zero Kelvin is minus 273 Celsius. And what that means is to go from Kelvin to Celsius, you would subtract... 273. And to go the other way, okay, if you go back and look at this one, if you're at minus 273, how are you going to get to zero? You'd have to add 273. So that's how you convert between them.
So once again we want to write this in equation form. And when we say things are directly proportional, what you mean is if one doubles, the other doubles. The way of thinking about that is that the ratio of the numbers remains constant. So we can write, and I'll keep trying to emphasise that the temperature there's got to be in Kelvin, that P over T is equal to a constant. Or the more useful form, and as it appears in the formula sheet, Now the K doesn't appear in the formula sheet, so you need to remember that. I'm just putting it in here to try and keep stressing that idea. Where P stands for pressure. Once again, measured in Pascals, but it could be uh, in other units. But temperature has got to be in Kelvin. And the reason for that is that the other units of pressure are just a multiple of Pascals which means if you used them in both sides, you could just divide that multiple out. But because Kelvin temperatures and Celsius temperatures are converted by adding and subtracting, you can't just have a standard multiple that you could cancel out in both sides. So temperature has got to be in Kelvin. And that's the thing that people forget a lot. That's why I'm trying to stress it. So for example... An aerosol can at 27 degrees Celsius, and you'll see these numbers come up quite often because uh, you'll see in a wee second they make the calculations quite easy. An aerosol can at 27 degrees Celsius has a pressure of 3 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals. And you'll notice that there's warnings in aerosol can saying don't expose to direct sunlight, don't put in fires. So let's see why that might be a problem. Okay, so what pressure have? And so if you put it in a fire, for instance, so the temperature went up to, let's say, 327 degrees Celsius. So once again, I'm just going to pick the first pair of data go together. So when the temperature is 27 Celsius, the pressure is 3 times 10 to 5 Pascals. So P1, 3 times 10 to 5 Pascals. T1 is 27 degrees Celsius equals 300 Kelvin. So that's where you'll see numbers like 27, 327 come up quite a lot. Temperature 2 we're given, 327 degrees Celsius, 327 plus 273 is 600 Kelvin. And therefore P2 is our question mark. The formula P1 over T1. And I've already done my conversion to Kelvin, so I'll write the formula as it actually appears in the formula sheet. And that becomes 3 times 10 to the power 5 over 300 equals P2 that I'm trying to work out over 600. Now some of you might look at these numbers and the math of it might be kind of obvious what the answer is, but I'll just go through all the steps uh, just in case. Um, and what I'm going to do, start by doing then, if you're not so confident with your math, is cross multiplying. I'm kind of working across the page just because I'm running out of space. 300 times P2 equals 600 times 3 times 10 to the 5. Work out what I can, so I'll leave that just as 300 times P2 just now. Do the calculation there, and I'll get 1.8 times 10 to the 8 and then divide both sides by 300 to get P2 on its own and get our final answer now. So basically we've doubled the pressure and 
you know, if the can's only uh, designed to withstand the kind of normal pressures of three times ten to the five, then it's likely uh, to explode with that uh, larger pressure.